Uh, I want to bring in the rest of the group that is with us today. Josh Holmes is standing by as I pull up the exact quote that I thought was very interesting um, from A.G. Barr at the very beginning. He said, the threat to black lives posed by crime on the streets is massively greater than any threat posed by police misconduct. The leading cause of death for young black males is homicide. Every year, approximately 7,500 black Americans are victims of homicide. The mass majority of them, around 90 percent, are killed by other blacks, mainly by gunfire. And each of those lives matter. Josh, your reaction, what you've seen so far? Well, look, I, I think we are all grateful when we can hear directly from the attorney general and not from sort of the media filter that parses out uh, the facts that he's referring to. These are all incredibly depressing statistics that are happening across cities across America. And, and frankly, you wouldn't be able to read much or hear much about it if it wasn't for hearings like this where you can hear directly from the attorney general. I thought he's comported himself very well here this morning. It's an incredible mismatch between congressional Democrats were basically forced to just sort of try to shout over him. They're, they're asking questions, but not really. They're more like statements. And then anytime he tries to interject, they basically reclaim their time and, and don't allow him to speak. I can only imagine that's because uh, what he's about to say would refute most of what their question was. And so, look, I think he's done really well this morning. I think this is an important conversation for the American public to hear about. I, I obviously wish that the demeanor of, of some of the members of Congress would be a little bit more befitting of the institution that they're representing. But beyond that, I, I think this is an important hearing. Yeah. Marie, I mean, that has been really frustrating just as a general listener. You know, Democrats have asked him questions and then they don't let him answer. And I thought the whole point was to bring him here to, you know, quote unquote, answer for a lot of the things that have happened. And, and I wanted to hear what his response was. Why, why, why do you think they, they don't let him actually answer? Melissa, unfortunately, this is what televised House hearings have become. I sat through many of these when the Obama administration was in office, where the same thing happened to us from the other side. And unfortunately, both sides of the aisle play to the cameras in these hearings. That's why closed hearings actually are often much more productive in terms of getting information. Uh, I actually would like um, them to let him answer on some occasions. There are some times I was on the edge of my seat saying, just hear what he has to say. Right. Um, but the one issue he, he, the one, so I actually agree with you um, in many respects. The one issue he has sidestepped um, on Portland, it's like two different realities here. And he keeps talking about the violent rioters, of which there are some, but he hasn't directly answered the photos we've seen of these DHS forces pointing guns at peaceful mothers and veterans protesting. He's tried to focus on one and not the other.